Well, thank you. I'd like to ask everyone to uh, do two things, please. First, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. <laughs> I, I would like you to dial back a little bit on the intensity of the presentation. <laughs> And I'd like to uh, ask you to change the dimension from the interlattice uh, inter dimension to, uh, say, 35,000 feet uh, above um, as we uh, look, look at this very complicated and very uh, big topic. It is a very complicated topic, and Dave Nagel and I would like to uh, give a quick overview uh, no way to cover such a large topic in 15 or 20 minutes. But what we do hope to do is provide a, uh, a kind of a template, uh, a high level overview, and then an approach to the, uh, to the issue uh, and a framework that uh, I hope will be useful or will hope, hopefully be useful uh, going forward. So I'd like to start with a, a quick review of the many advantages of Lenner as, a, as an energy source. I'm not going to go through these individually, uh, but I would like to call your attention to the last one here. The, uh, the fact that when Lenner comes about, that uh, there's a high likelihood that it'll be flexible in terms of how it's deployed, either in a centralized fashion like today's power plants or more importantly, in a distributed fashion where the uh, power source is very close to the, uh, the point of consumption. And we'll see that come up uh, again and again in this presentation. My, how things have changed. When Leonard was first announced in 1989, the emphasis was on energy supply. Fuel shortage and long gas lines of the 1970s were still fresh on everyone's mind. And the big issue was dependence on foreign oil, primarily because of the uh, Arab boycotts during that time. Still fresh on people's minds. Since then, I think the value of Leonard has shifted dramatically to fossil, actual fossil fuel, fossil fuel displacement. Now, don't get me wrong, everybody I think was hoping back in 1989 that, that there would be displacement, perhaps over the long term. But with the greenhouse gas, uh, greenhouse gas emissions and global climate change uh, uh, and the changes that we see, uh, there's been a, a huge shift on the emphasis. We're at the point now where fossil energy sources threaten the very habitability of our planet. As I said, global climate change is, is emerging in recent decades. Uh, it's been recognized. Uh, the impacts on the Earth's surface, which I also want to talk about, have been around and have been addressed for more than 60 years, going back to the 1960s and 1970s. 1970s was the, um, the decade of the environment with uh, many, many laws and uh, regulations implemented. Fortunately, Leonard Energy provides sol uh, potential solutions to both of these. Let's talk about some of the basics of global climate change. It's real, although still, unfortunately, not universally accepted. Its causes are known, the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide primarily, but also methane and nitrogen oxide. Its impacts are momentous, and they're already underway. And finally, mitigation is well understood, but extremely difficult. Here are a few salient examples uh, I'll very quickly go over of global climate change impacts. Uh, obviously, increasing temperatures of the atmosphere and the oceans worldwide, uh, rising sea levels and required protective measures for coastal communities or cities, possibly even leading to relocation of cities further inland, changing current ocean currents and associated weather and climate change, greater hurricane and other storm intensities and associated flooding, redistribution of water resources and the pumping required for that, and increases in wildfires and associated air pollution. 
So how can Leonard help mitigate global climate change? Well, I think there are just four areas or four approaches. One is to displace fossil fuels and their emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, remove greenhouse gas from the, uh, from the emissions with treatment technology as they're coming out of the stack or wherever, recover the greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and respond to unavoidable, these unavoidable, very large scale impacts. Let's look at each one in a little more detail. Fossil fuel displacement is clearly the, mo it's the most ap uh, apparent and uh, best long-term lender opportunity for global climate change. Uh, it had, this is where the advantage of the centralized versus distributed depl uh, deployment of Leonard uh, comes in. However, under mar normal market conditions, it can be expected that Leonard uh, penetration of the uh, energy market is going to be slow as, uh, as the fossil fuels are replaced. Probably not soon enough. For global climate, for GCC mitigation, which is already on us. However, this is subject to government intervention. We've seen many times when the government has stepped in for the public interest and invested heavily in develop and development and deployment of a technology for the, uh, literally to save the world. They for that, uh, potentially, if we have this uh, breakthrough that we hope for, a uh, an effort typically uh, like the uh, Manhattan Project. The second place where Leonard will help with, um, or has the potential to help with global climate change is, uh, and the um, fossil fuel emissions is uh, the, uh, removal of the greenhouse gases as they're being emitted, as they're being emitted. I think this is particularly applicable to stationary power plants. <laughs> Not unlike sulfur dioxide, which is already done. I'll have more to say about this in, in, a, little, in a little bit. With the uh, produced uh, carbon dioxide disposed by underground injection, here we see opportunities for linear um, energy for powering the uh, sequest, uh, sequestration technology uh, uh, for construction. Uh, power for construction of the underground disposal infrastructure. And we'll see this one over and over, over again uh, here and in the second half of my presentation, uh, technology improvements with the, particularly with this ability for the uh, energy source to be distributed close to where the, uh, where the point of consumption is. Greenhouse gas recovery, it's kind of like closing the door after the, house is, after the horse is out of the barn. Uh, it's referred to as direct air capture. There are many potential solutions uh, for this, uh, pre presently in R&D, but not apparently yet ready for full deployment. Lander energy opportunities here are as a power source for uh, the recovery technology once it's developed and deployed, power for the infrastructure construction uh, for the uh, recovery, and again, technology improvements. And uh, the fourth area is, uh, is lender energy to deal with these impacts that I listed previously. Storm intensities, pumping for redistribution, up to and including potential relocation of the coastal cities further inland. These are extremely large lender opportunities. How much energy do you think it would take to move a city inland from, from the coast? for construction and setup of the new location, new energy supplies, uh, of course supplied by Leonard, uh, the movement of people and materials, uh, and the demolition and restoration of the current location of the cities. Hard to imagine what that would require. So I've been talking about global climate change uh, impacts if, uh, we're, if Leonard's also is able to displace fossil fuels, it also minimizes the impacts at the Earth's surface. What I'm talking about here is um, air pollution, water pollution, and land pollution, uh, called soil pollution in this diagram. 
So beyond fossil uh, displacement, fossil fuel displacement, there are many opportunities uh, while we wait for that displacement to take place. And they fall really, I think, in two categories, dealing with current fossil fuel operations uh, while we're waiting for them to be displaced and perhaps considering Leonard as a supplement uh, energy source for current and future operations. But I think even more important is the, uh, are the, legacy, is the legacy pollution from fossil fuel sources for the past 120 plus years. And there are plenty of these sites uh, where things have been disposed of uh, from energy uh, development and uh, conversion facilities. So that, that area is going to be around for a, with us for a really long time. The approach that we propose here is to organize uh, the uh, role of Leonard around air, water, land, uh, and land pollution, as I just mentioned, as well as public health. And I think we, the best thing to do is to focus on Leonard Energy as it could be applied to current technologies, although we, as we'll see on each slide, uh, there are always opportunities for technology improvements. Especially, as I've already noted, because of the potential for distributed uh, deployment. What am I talking about? Air, water, and solid waste, or air, water, and land, I should say. Start with a, an example for air quality. Here are the uh, power plant emissions. Uh, before I was talking about uh, uh, removal of carbon dioxide. Well, here I'm talking about conventionally what's currently done, uh, especially sulfur burning, I mean, uh, coal burning power plants uh, often have a very high uh, uh, emission of sulfur dioxide causing acid rain, which has been a huge problem in the in past years, especially in the uh, eastern United States and Canada. And the uh, technology for addressing this issue is food gas desulfurization, FGD. And the uh, FGD re uh, generates a huge amount of sludge, uh, calcium sulfate sludge, uh, that has had to be disposed of. I think our uh, example, in our example, the Leonard energy opportunities are for power for the FGD operations. In other words, supplement the power being produced uh, with Leonard Energy to actually run the scrubbers. And certainly uh, uh, power for doing the cleanup of these sludge ponds and pits. Again, uh, potential technology improvements with this new and advantageous source of energy. For water quality, I pick uh, as my example, uh, abandoned coal mine drainage. This is acid mine drainage, uh, very uh, low pH, very acidic uh, waters coming out of these old, old coal mines, uh, contaminating the surface waters, uh, so, uh, streams and rivers, as well as uh, groundwater contamination around these mines. Here the linear, uh, energy opportunities are for uh, uh, a substitution for doing capturing and treating these uh, this outflow, uh, and then of course cleaning up the impacted rivers and streams, as well as uh, providing the power for pumping and treating the groundwater, and technology improvements. For my land pollution example, I want to point out uh, point to refinery sludge land farms, where the uh, sludge is deposited on the soils so that bacteria, uh, soil bacteria, can break down the organics. But uh, these, uh, these sludges, are, are from ref particularly from refineries, are very heavy not only in the organics but also in heavy metals, resulting in soil contamination and groundwater pollution, uh, to say nothing of the loss of the uh, producing uh, the soils for producing food and fiber. Leonard Energy opportunities would be uh, alternative sludge treatment technologies, keep it on the, in the refinery and treat it with, uh, with this new power source rather than disposing of it on the land. Uh, because of these legacy sites, there will be opportunities for power for uh, contaminated soil cleanup, and also if uh, groundwater has been contaminated, uh, again, for power for pumping and treating, and technology improvements, which are very 
possible with this ability to deploy the uh, energy uh, to close to the source. Here's another groundwater contamination example. This is a uh, petroleum product tank farm. Uh, these tanks uh, uh, contain gasoline, diesel fuel, fertilizers, and other such materials transported from the refinery uh, for local distribution. Um, these tanks very frequently leak into the subsurface causing hydrocarbon pollution of the aquifer. Uh, and what's currently done is, uh, again, to pump and treat the uh, contaminated groundwater. Lender Energy is again uh, uh, potentially applied for, as power for the pumps for, and for, uh, for treating the polluted groundwater and possibility of technology improvements. For public health, of course, I will point to the uh, spent nuclear fuel rods uh, coming from nuclear power plants. Uh, the high level uh, ionizing radiation in these fuel rods is a huge public issue for potential exposure. These rods are currently uh, stored at or close to uh, the power plants. Uh, and that's because we haven't really uh, solved the problem of long-term storage uh, of these rods. Back in, uh, I think, 1991, the Nuclear Waste Policy Act was passed in the United States, uh, promising that the federal government was going to take care of this problem. And not only that, but nobody else is going to be allowed to take care of this problem. Needless to say, that's been a huge failure, despite billions being spent on looking at different locations for high-level high nuclear waste long-term storage. As far as the uh, opportunities for Leonard, there have been a lot of public, well, a few publications anyway, in this field about possibly using Leonard to tra for transmutation of these long half-life to, uh, to short half-life radioactive elements. In other words, short, shorten the storage requirement from thousands of years to mere decades. Uh, this is not at all demonstrated as technically feasible or cost effective yet, but uh, certainly to be kept in mind uh, as, as a major opportunity. And of course, power for the construction of these storage facilities. Okay. Uh, okay. As far as lender opportunities for maintaining Earth's habitability, uh, I'd like to move on to uh, uh, mitigating the changes at the Earth's surface, and I'm going to move quickly. Uh, this is a, uh, well, this is, this is basically just a summary of what I said first about global climate change, and then what I said about the impacts at the Earth's surface. Um, I'm not going to repeat all these, but I will reiterate that, uh, that what we have here is a high-level conceptual model uh, which we think we find, uh, provides a framework for much more detailed analysis as, uh, as Leonard becomes available and we look at the treatment uh, technologies that are currently available and apply the power there and then deal with these uh, legacy sites that exist all around the globe. Any questions? Thank you, Tom. We have time for some questions. Yeah. Thank you for very exhaustive, uh, uh, let's say, coverage. Uh, I would highlight uh, a couple of points. One is uh, that in all these applications, uh, let's say, if you do a, an opportunity comparison, this would replace uh, other forms of uh, decarbonized uh, energy, which, uh, which have a, a huge impact uh, on materials, while this is almost a dematerialized uh, technology. So a huge advantage would be this ind indirect uh, effect. You would reduce the demand uh, of, uh, uh, of many things. A and the other point uh, that maybe, yes, there's a lot, but some kind of prioritization and which are the low hanging fruits. I would point to one in particular, which is proving uh, difficult to deal with, which is the individual or uh, small uh, apartment building furnaces. Mm -hmm. uh, today we have the heat pump, which works, 
but it basically you re it requires another uh, system to be put into place. Also because normally the, the, the losses of the old houses mean that you need much higher power. Uh, a furnace based uh, on, on these principles would probably even reuse some parts of the furnace itself, like the heat exchanger and so on and so forth, and the rest of the house, uh, the tubing and everything, you won't touch. So some uh, look at uh, a kind of prioritization and look at cases like this where it's really a win-win-win. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, I would certainly point to the uh, uh, advantage that we're really hoping for of uh, deployment uh, of power units to very localized locations, close to the power, to the point of consumption, even to the point of perhaps even individual homes or, or small groups of homes. Uh, so I, I take your point. Okay, um, very good, but uh, you forgot one point, it's space exploration. It can be very useful to go to, to Mars or the moon, that could be very useful for applications. You're talking about geoforming no. one of our sister planets? No, no, no. As a new home? No, 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 I'm thinking about just living there. <laughs> you need energy. Yeah, well that would require geoforming in order to make them suitable for human habitation. And, we, and if you're talking about maybe moving half the population, that's only 500 million people that would have to go to Mars. I don't think they're going to go to Venus. That's pretty, be pretty hard to terraform that planet. We can produce greenhouse effect there. There you go. <laughs> or the reverse of it, since it has way too much greenhouse effect as it is, to, I think that what the temperature on Venus is high enough to melt lead. Yeah, so. Next yeah. question. Uh, you have very nicely covered almost all aspects of where Eliana can be harnessed. But one more thing I thought I should bring to notice of all the people here. Uh, there, there are no centralized power stations. The requirement will slowly vanish. You will have decentralized, every village will have its own power, gridless transmission of power. So no towers required. No underground cables required. So there will be a huge change in the way we handle the power generation, power distribution, transmission, all that losses will come down. So it is a very big, uh, if you can work towards that, uh, at least uh, some people can work towards uh, gridless, transmissionless uh, alien, or it will be fantastic. Yes. This, this also can be used. But uh, space, uh, I, of course, you are, you are covered Earth's habitability. Space for uh, Mars and all, they have uh, MMRTG, they carry plutonium on board the satellite, on board the space vehicle, convert plutonium heat, generated heat into electricity and use it. They want only 100 watts, but they are carrying kilograms of plutonium just to give it 100 watts for several years. Mm -hmm. So in LNR, if it's successful, there may be a solution for this uh, safe, uh, space transportation, space travels. Space uh, these two points I thought uh, I can bring to note it. And, and NASA Glenn is working. NASA Glenn is working on this. We have to uh, move on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Of course. So the next. Yeah,